Hi, Mark. Uh, I'm going to start with the, the very recent news, uh, news there that the, the Six Nations say the game will go ahead on, on, on Sunday. Um, are you, you pleased with that? And do you, do you feel that having stated your case, that, that, that helped to, to influence a, a positive decision there? Yeah, I think we're delighted that the game is going ahead. Um, it's important that we that we are uh, allowed to prepare properly for that game. Um, I was in Orium earlier this week, and uh, uh, we've had a really good uh, week's preparation for the game. All the boys want to play it. I'm delighted the French want to play it too. Uh, we made our case quite clear to Six Nations about why we want the game being played uh, uh, this Sunday, and um, we look forward to a great contest. And just. Um up on that, what has the yeah the the general situation with COVID and the, the difficulties that that ha, has has brought? What has been the uh, the most challenging part of that for you from the, your you know side of the the operation this year? I think that the hardest thing is just being able to plan properly. You know, the situation can change in an instant. It can change uh, from uh, from one moment to the next. Through, through different reasons. And what we've got to do is to keep our players as safe as possible, make sure we, we abide by all the protocols. Uh, but it's a case of always in the back of your mind. You never know, uh, you know what may happen. And, and, and it is fragile. You guys know that. You know, it's, a, it's a very fragile moment trying to get these games away. And I, I don't envy anybody trying to put a, a tournament together at the moment. I know how difficult it is. But uh, as I say, touch wood, we're, we're, we're ready to go on Sunday. Mark, can I ask you um, uh, what's going to happen in terms of uh, Dominic Mackay? Um, is that role going to be filled or is there going to be a significant uh, restructure? Well, we, we're going through a restructure process here anyway. And then Dom moving to, to Celtic has just probably given us a chance to look once more at uh, just what we're going to do. But yeah, the roles will be replaced um, and we'll make sure that we, uh, um, you know, we, we, we take our time and get some outstanding con uh, uh, candidates to, to replace to replace them. Given what's happened at Celtic with the manager leaving there and things sort of accelerating, would you anticipate losing Dominic before the summer? Did might it suit you and might it suit him for things to um, maybe be moved forward a, a, a few months? Is, is that in your mind? I think, from my point of view, you know what's happening at Celtic is is something that you know is is is, is out of my control and not something I'm, I'm utterly familiar with. But I clearly know that Dom's going to have a a very full entry when he gets there. The issue for us is that we, you know, he has a notice period that he has to serve here and we need uh, stability in our business too. So um, I expect Dominic to, to, to be here with us for a while yet. Hi, Mark. Can I just follow up on that? I mean, obviously, it's, it's quite a turbulent picture at Celtic right now. Knowing Dom as you, as you do, I mean, just how uh, confident are you that he can go in there and, and make the sort of impact that the, the Celtic supporters will be, will be looking for? I can tell you about, about Dom's impact on, on this business. You know, he's been here uh, a decent period of time, and uh, he's been, you know, instrumental in the in the transformation of Scottish rugby from a, a commercial and sporting uh, perspective. So, uh, he's a really talented guy. Personally, I'm I'm, I'm very I'm close to him, um, and and I know what a good operator he is. And just in terms of you know, he's obviously had to prove adaptable in the role that he's got right now, but he's obviously going to yeah. A different sport, a different world in that sense. I mean, how confident are you that he can handle the different pressures that come with football that are, you know, probably very distinct from from the the pressures you'll face in the rugby world? Yeah, I think that there are different pressures in in both of those sports, and certainly there'll be different pressures that he has here that you'll find when he when he gets to Celtic. But he's a he's a he's a smart individual. He's a very experienced operator, and I'm sure he'll adapt. Thank you. Uh, Mark, uh, if it's okay to, to come back in, just on a, a different uh, matter, we're, we're looking at the the, the, the Lions uh, tour and just wondering um, if, uh, are you happy that there's, there's a push to, to stage a Lions tour this year with, with so much uncertainty or, or is there an argument to maybe push it, push it back a year? I think it's a really difficult, it's a, it's a bit like the, 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 the conversation we just had about the Six Nations on a on a smallest Lions issue is complex and difficult and subject to to change, um, you know, from a medical and, and and also a sporting context all the time. I think what we're waiting for is all the information behind any options that are presented to us. 
and take the best information that we best decision we can with the opera with the information that we need to take that decision. And I guess the same thing might apply, but I'll ask anyway your thoughts on the the, the Pro 14, the, the Rainbow Cup that was going to be brought in. Do you think that can can and still should go ahead? That, that's that's exactly the same the same scenario. I mean, yes, it's a great idea, and I think the overall idea of Pro 16 with those sides uh, also, and it, it, again, is massively attractive. But again, we're governed by external factors, and we have to make sure we have the best information upon which to base our decisions. Well, can I just ask another question? Sorry, um, obviously sure. you announced uh, yesterday that uh, obviously they won't be having fans and for the remaining two games of the Six Nations, obviously because of the COVID situation. You've spoken previously about what sort of financial impact would that. You want to update us and just you know how bleak is it looking now that you, you know you're not going to have sort of those supporters in, you know, filling the, the, the union's coffers. Well, I think you know how the, the Six Nations behind closed doors is something that we. That we plan for, given the the, the impact of of COVID, uh, so we we plan for it, but it does make a substantial hole in our revenues. But we've we've had a, um, um, uh, a material grant from government that's allowed us to you know repair our balance sheet to a certain extent, and that's been enormously helpful. And we've also done some refinancing around our business, so we expected not to have uh, crowds at the Six Nations. Um, and therefore, we've we planned accordingly. We've made savings, and the the business is in a strong position going forward now. 